Arnold, in an interview, goes out there and tells in the interview, screw your freedom. This is a Hollywood Reporter story. He gave his fellow Americans a blunt message this week. Screw your freedom. The former governor of California, an actor, was adamant about his stance on COVID-19 safety precautions. says, there's a virus here. It kills people. And the only way we, we prevent it is to get vaccinated, to wear masks, to do social distancing, washing your hands all the time, and not just to think about it. Well, my freedom is being kind of disturbed here. No, screw your freedom, because with freedoms comes up obligations and responsibilities. You cannot just say, I have the right to X, Y, and Z. When you affect other people, then it gets serious. The responsibility is similar to the following rules at a traffic light so no one gets killed, the former governor said. So that's Arnold's commentary. Now, I got some mm-hmm. thoughts on this, but I want to hear your thoughts. Gerard, what do you think about what Arnold said to screw your freedom? Oh, man. I, 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 two things go through my mind. I'm the, I'm, I'm the biggest Arnold guy in the world, too. And, and three things go through my mind. First of all, Former Republican governor of California. Mm. So there you go. You want to recall, by the way. Yeah. Three, yep. three, former Republican governor of California. So, you know, you, it goes to Adams. It's both sides things. It's very clearly there, there is this, this you know, elite aristocracy. And then there's the rest of us unsophisticated plebeians who the, we we have to get cattle, herded into these cattle cars. We've got to get this shot. But they can have their 700 person uh, parties in Martha's Vineyard with no masks because you know they they earn the freedom. They're well, they're probably all vaccinated. Yeah, and they, yeah, because that worked out for them. Seventy five of them are sick now. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is, man, it, it's you the Christopher Nolan line in the, in the Dark Knight. You either you either die the hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. How can this guy, who grew up in in the shadow of totalitarian Europe? Right, he he grew up after Nazi Germany and with uh, uh, the USSR, the Steel Curtain, literally above him, and he has been here for 60 years. Every one of his dreams came true thanks to the freedoms of this country. And now that he's on the back nine, he's like, "Screw your freedoms, screw your freedoms. I've gotten everything I wanted. It, it worked for me. Screw your freedoms. Now don't make me sick." Like it, it's the most it's the most narcissistic thing that I've ever heard somebody say. It was the most tone deaf thing I've ever heard somebody say. And this is not a dumb guy. He's an incredibly intelligent He's man. He's not a dumb guy. You know, not at and, all. and I'm wondering if somebody got to him. I'm wondering if there's what's going on behind the scenes where these Bill Burr has a whole bit on him being a great man. It's one of the funniest comedy bits of all time. It's if, hilarious. If you've never I've heard, heard it, of course you, I've heard it multiple times. Fun- mm-hmm. Well, look, I'd love to hear Bill Burr's commentary on this yeah. because, you know what? <sighs> I don't know, Bill. This is one of the things that you could actually do to make you no longer a great man. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, you grew up. You said you were a, you're a hero of Arnold. Mm-hmm. You literally wanted to be Arnold yep. growing up. So I was never like a big Arnold guy. Obviously, you know, I watched Total Recall and Terminator. That was like, But I never looked up to Arnold being from Florida. I was never, you know, you're from California. He was your governor for however many years. How long was he the governor when you were living there? Eight, eight years? years, yeah. So like I've I never said, he's had a recall governor, but yeah, I've never total recall. Yeah. I've never had this <laughs> fascination with Arnold. Yep. Um, I guess my question is, does he have a point at all? Clearly, his past history, coming from Austria or whatever, the Iron Curtain, and now having living the most amazing life ever, United States. Obviously, his perspective has changed significantly in the last fifty years. I guess my question is, does he have a point? And if he does, do you, do you look at him any differently, Pat? Yeah, so a couple different things for me here. A couple different things for me here. When I think about, like, in the world of bodybuilding, Arnold's mm-hmm. a hero. Aaron Singerman, the founder and CEO of uh, Redcon, mm-hmm. who gave a half a million dollars to the Trump yeah. Obama interview, you know, he made a video yesterday. Very respectful, very fair, but he called him out. He said, we're no longer doing a sponsorship with Arnold Classic anymore, and he cut out Hundreds of thousands of dollars he does every year at the Arnold Classic. This is not a regular small co- a company. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty big That's supplement company. And he says, I'm sorry, I don't support. He says, you have the right to say that, but I have mm-hmm. the right to not sponsor you. I'm not doing it this year. He pulled out, right? Redcon. And he's got Kai Green, all these other guys. And Kai Green's an Arnold Classic guy. You know, So it's mm-hmm. all this stuff that's taking place. Here's, here's how I see this uh, uh, with, with Arnold. I have a very big challenge with what he said. 
Uh, his poster's been on my walls in my Army barracks, all over the place. Okay, mm-hmm. I had his poster everywhere. I have his poster that I had in the Army. Till today, it's in my stash. I've kept it, right? Because it was like something you got to keep from 1998, 1999, when I was at the 101st Airborne Division. I bought every magazine. Every year, Muscle Mag or Flex would do a special on Arnold. I'd buy all of them. They'd have a poster in the middle of it. I've read Total Recall. We made Total Recall book of the month to read in the entire company. We've ordered 6,000 copies of his book. We had everyone read an 800-page book. I don't know if you've read it or not, where he goes through explaining the whole story, how the first, I think, the building he bought in Palmdale or how he decided again to real estate. The stories of Joe Weider. He thought it was such a big headquarters until he comes in town. He knows his Joe Weider's office was like a small shack. It's like, wow, Joe was really able to sell this thing. His friend with Franco Colombo, his experience with his dad when he's about to go compete for Mr. Universe and all of a sudden his father passes away and he has to choose whether he goes to pursue Mr. Universe or he goes back to the funeral. He chooses to go to bodybuilding competition, then comes up, hey, you will never be an actor. You sound weird. You don't sound right. And he says, no, I'm going to do it. Then he goes and marries a Kennedy. Then he goes out there, becomes a governor. He goes out there and becomes the highest paid actor. At one point, he was making 20 a movie. He was the mm-hmm. highest paid actor before In there the was 80s, a rock. In the 80s, 90s, exactly. Before there was a rock, it was Arnold. Like, everybody followed mm-hmm. this guy's playbook. But here's a challenge. Here's a challenge on what happens. When you start making money and you have fame, and I think this is what's going on with them, there's a few things that happens to you at this phase of your life, okay? You, your worries change. Your worries change from, man, am I free to go out there and have my dreams become a reality? All of those checks have been done already. Check mark, check mark, check mark. Mm-hmm. Now it's about... Am I going to get a Nobel? Am I going to get another prize? Am I going to be invited to an Obama birthday party? Am I going to get on the good list of this? Am I going to get on the good list of that? Because at this point, what else do you have? Legacy. You, what, no, what else do you have? No, no, it's, it's more, it's not even the legacy part. Because saying screw your freedom, what the hell do you mean screw your freedom, bro? What are you talking about screw your freedom? Okay, so screw your freedom. William Bonac is from Ghana. Okay, William Bonac won 2018 Arnold Classic. Okay, your competitors, Roly. Uh, you know, you got uh, Joshua is from Australia, Joshua Lenartowitz. We know what's going on in, uh, in Australia right now. How about Hadi Chopin? Hadi Chopin, who is an Iranian bodybuilder. Go explain to him, screw your freedom. Go explain to him what's going on in Iran right now with screw your freedom. What the hell do you mean screw your freedom? I think it's out of touch. I think he is trying to please an audience. I don't know why. I think standing up, he was very brave to stand up against Trump and make those videos and say all the stuff that he said. But nowadays, he's just trying to, uh, you know, win the wrong audience. And I don't know what is going on through his mind when he does this. Nobody knows the whole story. So about- he, he was your hero. Have you lost respect for him? Where, where is he at on your mantle right now? Yeah, you know what it, you know what it is? To me, it's, it's when you forget. Like, listen, when, when a person... Okay, so for example, I have, uh, we just had a convention last week, right, in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. One of the things I remind my guys to follow, and I said, listen, I don't care if you make a half a million a year, a million a year. 10 million a year, 20 million a year. The day you can no longer relate to the $15 an hour person, you lose the game. Mm-hmm. The movie, the movie Gladiator, where Marcus Aurelius, not Marcus Aurelius, where Gladius Maximus is asking his owner, he says, I want to earn my freedom. What did he say? Win the crowd, win what? Win the hearts, win the Win, win the, the crowd, crowd yeah. win your freedom, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Arnold, you won the crowd. You won your freedom. Did you forget? Did you forget what a totalitarian regime did to you? Did you forget what it was like being where you were at? Well, you have no say. You can't say anything like that the way you just did right now. You can't get on a video and say certain things in certain countries. You know what's going on in Afghanistan, how scared people are? Go explain to those guys, screw your freedom. Yeah, the guys go, hold, go, holding go tell on it to with them. their bare hands. Go, people, the- go, go tell the women in, in Afghanistan, hey, sorry, you can't go to school anymore. Your dream was to be a journalist. One girl they're interviewing, she's speaking eloquently in English, better than I speak in English, and she says, one of my dreams is, I told my journalist boss that I work for, I said, one day I want to own that chair. I want to be sitting in your chair because I want to be like you, a boss. A woman saying that in Afghanistan. Guess what? She could do that last week. It's over. She can no longer do that. Kids are going through what they're going through right now. Girls are afraid. A, a guy's being interviewed. He says, I am afraid for my life. Me and my sister are living together. My dad, they got killed. My mom got killed. Yeah. I'm by myself. He's shivering, mm-hmm. shivering while they're screaming in the back, death upon America. Yeah, screw your freedom, Arnold. What the hell happened with perspective? What happened with perspective? Are you just trying to get aligned with your best friend, Tom Hanks, and some of these other guys? I'm sorry. This is what bothers me the most. Look, we're friends. Yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. We yes. can hang out and have a conversation together, right? Dude, no matter how much I love you, I'm not going to compromise how much I respect capitalism. 
No matter how much I love you, you cannot change my mind on capitalism. Capitalism is capitalism. No matter who's my, I love my mother. She cannot change my thoughts on communism not being a good system. I love my mom. She's in the top three list of people, top seven people. I got four kids now. Top seven, eight people in my life. Even a woman I love cannot change my values on what I saw happen to her family, what happened to different countries, and what happened to us coming over to America. I'm an Iranian guy. What the hell are we doing here? Because we escaped something. We escaped something. Go ahead and explain, uh, screw your freedom. So for me, the moment you cross that line where you say something like that, just because you want a one-liner on CNN, a guy was messaging me saying the only reason he said that is because he is becoming irrelevant and he wants to kind of get some, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Press and traction. Yeah. I disagree with that. Arnold's never going to be irrelevant. Arnold's a governor, you know, highest paid actors in the top list, you know, married to Kennedy, seven times to Olympia. The guy's legacy is stacked. He's got a resume that's very few people in America have the guy's resume. Very, very few people. He has an opportunity today to actually unite America. A guy like Arnold could be a synergist, but he's becoming a guy that's dividing. There used to be time where people would tell me, don't say things like that because he may never do an interview with you. My dream in my life is not to interview Arnold. Yeah. I didn't wake up in the morning saying, oh, my gosh, let me say all the right things because I'm walking on eggshells. God forbid I offend Arnold because he will never do an interview. I don't care. That's not my MO. What my MO is freedom and knowing the fact that the people in America that forgot how special this country is to be re-reminded. The last seven days, you look at Australia, you look at uh, Afghanistan, you look at Haiti. Those are three signs to remind you how ridiculously incredible of a country America is. One is infrastructure. When's the last mm-hmm. time you saw an earthquake bringing down and 1,400 people dying in America? I lived in L.A. Earthquakes happen all the time. How come we don't have that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. Strong infrastructure. Next one is what? Freedoms that we have women. We celebrate women victories here. We mm-hmm. celebrate women going. When's the last time you even thought about a woman cannot be a lawyer or a Zero, doctor? Never, uh, no, that's that's no, over there, yeah. though. So. The, the message of what Arnold said to me is a lot deeper than just, hey, screw your freedom. It's a lot deeper message and uh, uh, for the people who are like, well, you know, Pat, he's probably never going to sit down with you. That's not my so, goal in life. So I've got a crazy yeah. idea. Uh, Adam's going to put up $5 million. We're yeah. going to do a sit down between Patrick <laughs> and Arnold. We're going to get it going. Dude. It's unfortunate because this guy's a hero. This guy's a hero. This guy's a man I admired if, a lot. If you, you touched on this briefly. If he actually wanted to be a synergist what would be in his playbook what kind of what kind of rhetoric what is a synergist? what kind of moves so, so would he do unpack the mindset of a synergist mm-hmm. what give me the number one quality of a synergist they're willing to listen and they respect both sides that's the that's a synergist and yeah. he's not but they but they actually you have to you can't fake that respect no. you have to genuinely respect both sides and these quote unquote elites i keep talking about they very clearly don't respect anybody else they well, don't you don't have to the, you don't have to plebeians. respect let me let me choose my words carefully. You don't have to respect what they're saying, but you can respect their right to say it. So Daryl Davis, the the guy, the black man that sits down with the KKK, hates everything that comes out of their mouth. Sure, but he's willing and has enough respect for them to say, "Hey, look, you're entitled to your thoughts. You're entitled to your opinions." Yeah, but just just to just to be clear here, though, we're not we're not comparing people who want the right to their bodily autonomy to the KKK. No, it just it, I tell it you, comes I sat, down to respect. Look, I, I you respect with, other people's opinions. I sat down with David Horowitz. I don't know if you know who David Horowitz is. He's the yeah. father of uh, Ben Horowitz. His son is worth three and a half billion dollars. David this. Horowitz is a legendary author. Oh, wrote okay. a different books, and he started the interview. These Democrats are commies. I said, David, you can't say that. They are. I said, you can't say that. Mm-hmm. I said, you think you're going to be able to change people's minds by calling Democrats commies? I'm sorry. No. This whole thing with the Taliban in Afghanistan. Guess what Hillary said to Biden? Don't do it. Hillary's a Democrat. To me, Hillary's a Democrat Democrat, like mm-hmm. a real Democrat, right? Yeah. Minus all the favors and all the money with Haiti and all that other mess that she did, you know, on the crazy side that she is with a lot of controversy that comes. She came out and she said, don't do it. Don't do Condole- Don't pull out of Afghanistan. Condoleezza Rice, don't pull out of Afghanistan. Maybe both of them have a little bit of experience to know it's not a good mm-hmm. idea to pull out the way you pulled out. They're Democrats. So they was like, no, but all Democrats are uh, communists. No, so comments like that. Yeah. When you make, you ain't converting nobody like that. Zero. Zero. Yeah. When you say, screw your freedom, what the hell you do? Like, do you mm-hmm. think that, so, so think about that comment for you're a second. You're playing to your base, is what you're saying. What yeah. is the matter with you? People that say, already agree with you are just going to continue so to agree with you. who cares to do that? I'm a diehard Laker fan. Do I sit there and say Lakers can't do anything wrong? 
No, it's not my style. Mm-hmm. So I can say all the good things about Lakers for them to be, what do you call it, bulletproof. It's just not my style. So, you know, this is why when you hear people from their own side calling out somebody on their own side, they gain credibility. Like Tucker said, look, I think uh, we should have left uh, Afghanistan a long time ago. But the way we did it was wrong. So what's he saying? He's agreeing. Right. That, hey, we should. But, that last yeah, night. so you yeah. got to kind of say, hey, listen, good for Tucker. Or even Bill Maher or even John Stewart recently calling out your today. own side. Arnold had an opportunity to be one of the biggest synergists in America. He screwed up. Arnold, screw your freedom is what you say. You screwed up your chance to be a synergist. And synergist to me is way above being a voice for the Republican or the Democratic Party. It's way above well, that. Let me ask you this, though, because I'm of the opinion, and I agree, not all Democrats are communists, but I do believe to, in my heart that there are dyed-in-the-wool communists in the Democratic I Party right now that are posing as Democrats. I don't disagree. And I think that we have to out them. But, but, but I don't disagree with that. But the word, the key word is what? What's the key word? Not, not all. All, mm-hmm. all are. No, you're not, you're not right. I, I got. I run a company where we got. The other day, we're at the Hakka Sun. This girl comes up, says, "Pat, yeah. you know I love you, yeah. but Adam's my favorite. Right? <laughs> yeah. You I know like I that. love you, <laughs> but Adam's my favorite. You know yeah. what? Guess what? I love it mm-hmm. because it's discussion, it's debate, it's discourse. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that as long as we're having these real conversations together. Guess what? More power to you. I you, like you. You do have a shocking amount of like socialists that follow you. Like not Democrats. Like you have a shocking amount of socialists. Well, because like he, because he <laughs> interviews socialists. A shocking amount. I, I will interview communists, a socialist. I will interview just about anybody. Tell me I'll sit down with them. I'm very comfortable with that. Because to me, I think a good debate is where people learn. And my goal is more to be a synergist in life than to be a, you know, person that's used by a political party just because, hey, go up there and Let's use this guy. Ah, yeah, you can use me. I'm totally fine with that. I think man upstairs using certain people. But the message I'm going to say is a message that's going to be what I really believe in. Some of it you're going to like, some of it you're not going to like. I think that's really noble, but, I, man, I, I just I feel like these guys use that kindness as a weakness. I feel like, especially in this moment, yeah. the, 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 look, just call it what it is. We're, going, we're living through a global communist revolution. We are. We are living through China on the move. China overtaking no question us about it. into becoming the world's There's no question leader. about China making that move. They're making the yeah. move, all right? And they're, they're hiding their true intentions, and they've been doing this for a decade under the guise of other things. It's not communism. It's humanitarianism. It's not communism. It's the Green mm-hmm. New Deal. It's not communism. It's Black Lives Matter. It's not communism. It's, it, it, if your ideology is so noble... If your worldview is so good, why do you constantly have to hide your intentions? That, to me, is the biggest red flag of all. If this grand ideal, this utopian egalitarian ideal is so good, why do you constantly have to lie about what it is? And that, that to me, is the big red flag. And if we don't call it out, if we don't say, no, 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 this has nothing to do with climate crisis now it's gone from in, in the last 10 years it's gone from global warming to climate change to the climate crisis and i'm not saying that it doesn't exist all i'm saying is the messaging is getting more and more and more extreme okay the reasoning behind it now becomes oh we have to completely change all the industries into our control and all of the money that you earn and money just represents the hours of your life so all the hours of your life now come into my control and let's say aoc for example okay how does me giving you all my money change the weather? You got to prove your work there. You got to show your work. How You can't just make blanket statements where this is the climate crisis. We need to act now. Okay, give me 90% of your income and I'll make the weather change. Okay, bartender, how? Tell me how. I'm not saying no. Tell me how. It's just it's communism under these different names. They are using. When's the last these, time you watched 1984? I, I, I read the book. I read the book. I read uh, Orwell. Once a year, depending on what Have it you is. read it? You ever read it or no? Yeah, back in the day. Five, uh, I, I don't think we're living 84. through 84. I think we're living through Fahrenheit 451. Have you, have you, do you remember the story or no? Yeah, and there was also, what was the the Animal Farm? Uh, yeah, that's, that was another book, well right? Also, yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah I read both those books. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That, yeah. Animal yeah. Farm is just an allegory for the Bolshevik Revolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, the, the biggest thing is, the biggest thing is to be, to not be naive about what is going on today. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.